Hello everyone and welcome back to Canadian King Coins. In today's video I'll be giving you the history of the Canadian $5 banknote, both the older Dominion of Canada notes and the current Bank of Canada notes. The Bank of Canada is Canada's central bank, an issuer of all banknotes since it opened its doors in 1935. But before that, banknotes were issued directly by the government of the Dominion of Canada. For the longest time, the government was in favor of issuing $4 banknotes, as at the time, 4 Canadian dollars equaled 1 British pound, so it kind of made sense. But I'll be skipping over these for now. If in the future I do manage to get my hands on a $4 bill, I'd gladly make a video on them. In 1912, the first issue of the $5 banknote was released. It was blue, and featured a train called the Ocean Limited, traveling through Wentworth Valley, Nova Scotia on the obverse, and just an abstract design with a V on the reverse. I'd love to get one of these notes, but it'd be difficult to find even a terrible one for under $1,000. There are many varieties pertaining to the signature combinations and the introduction of a seal to the right of the note in 1922. In 1924, the second and last issue of the Dominion of Canada $5 banknotes was issued. This time the obverse featured a portrait of Queen Mary, King George V's wife, and the reverse featured the east block of the Canadian Parliament buildings. The center block that is usually seen on banknotes had burned down in 1916. Although these notes were produced in 1924, the demand was so low for the $5 denomination that they were actually not issued for circulation until 1934 leaving these notes very rare and valuable today. That same year, in 1934, the Central Bank of Canada Act was introduced, setting the Bank of Canada to open its doors on March 11, 1935. Upon its opening, the Bank of Canada also issued a full series of banknotes, from $1 to $1,000 in English, and a full separate issue in French. 1935 issue of the $5 bill was unique for its orange color, which would only be used on this issue. The obverse featured a portrait of the Prince of Wales, who would later briefly reign as King Edward VIII in 1936. The reverse featured an allegory representing power. They also made these new notes smaller to be closer to the size of American banknotes, rather than the old large-sized Dominion banknotes. After George V's death, and after Edward VIII's short reign, the Bank of Canada wanted to issue a new series of banknotes in 1937, featuring the new king, George VI. The $5 bill from this new series went back to being blue, and this was also the first series to be completely bilingual, with English on the left, French on the right. The reverse also kept the same allegory as on the 1935 issue, although of course now it's in blue instead of orange. There wouldn't be another issue until after King George VI's death in 1952. His daughter became Queen Elizabeth II, and the first series of Canadian banknotes to feature a portrait would be issued in 1954. This series was pretty much a total redesign of all previous issues, and turned out to be one of my favorite designs. The reverse features Otter Falls on the Ashkanak River in the Yukon. The issue also originally had a problem where people thought they could see the devil's face in the highlighted portion of the queen's hair. So many people were complaining about this, in fact, that the Bank of Canada quickly reissued the whole series with the modified portrait. The five I have here is the modified portrait, and banknotes with the devil's face variety can go for quite a lot of money. The next issue would come in 1972 as part of the Scenes of Canada series. This time, instead of featuring the Queen, it featured Canada's 7th Prime Minister, Sir Wilfrid Laurier, who was in office from 1896 to 1911. This note also incorporated multiple colors for the first time, leading this series to be nicknamed the Multicolor Series. The reverse features a salmon fishing operation off the coast of British Columbia. In 1979, the $5 and $20 bill of this series were reissued with the serial numbers on the reverse, and some colors modified to make the designs more distinct. 
The one I have here is the original 1972 issue. The next issue with the $5 bill would come as part of the Birds of Canada series in 1986. Sir Wilfrid Laurier would remain on the obverse of the note next to the old center block of Parliament, and the reverse now featured a belted kingfisher in its natural habitat. As a side note, this series was both the first not to include the $1 bill and the last to include the $2 and $1,000 bills. Next up here we have the series that I remember growing up with. With a growing concern over counterfeit notes, the Bank of Canada wanted their next issue to be as modern and secure as possible. So notes with the new series incorporated enhanced security features as well as being beautiful new designs. The first $5 bill of this new series came in 2002, with Laurier now featured next to the West Block of Parliament, and the reverse now featured children playing hockey. This has to be one of the most Canadian banknotes that was ever made, honestly. A quote from the book The Hockey Sweater is also featured right here. The winters of my childhood were long, long seasons. We lived in three places, the school, the church, and the skating rink, but our real life was on the skating rink. In 2006, the note was reissued, now including the holographic strip to the left that was previously only included on the higher denomination bills. And finally, we come to the current issue of the $5 bill as part of the new Frontiers series. Introduced in 2013, the most obvious change for this issue was that it was now printed on polymer. The focus of this new series was security and also technological innovation. The transparent window allows for micro-printing of numbers and shapes only visible in certain lighting, and even holographic elements. The traditional blue color remains on this issue, as well as the portrait of Sir Wilfrid Laurier and the West Block of Parliament right here. The theme on the reverse is Canada's contribution to space exploration. It features the Canada Arm 2 and the Dextre, two robotic tools used on the International Space Station, as well as a Canadian astronaut. The coolest thing about this $5 bill is that it was unveiled on a live broadcast from the International Space Station by Canadian astronaut and space commander Chris Hadfield. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this look at the Canadian $5 banknotes throughout the years. I wish I had some of the Dominion 5s to show you, but I'm still happy to have all the Bank of Canada ones. If you like this video and like to see more like it in the future, consider subscribing or check out some of the other videos on my channel. And as always, have a great day. And uh, these new polymer notes show us the, the type of thing that we can accomplish when we really put our minds to it. And let me show you an example of how we can reach new heights of innovation. Uh, C'est un, un grand honneur pour moi de participer maintenant au lancement de nouveaux billets canadiens de 5 dollars en polymer. Euh, on peut, moi peut-être, je peux vraiment dire que avec cette euh, cette nouvelle série de billets, euh, nous avons atteint de nouveaux sommets.